Welcome back guys, this is Legit Lee back again with another video update for the DIY CO2 laser cutter. And this is definitely for my laser lovers out here, man. Like, I've really put a lot of mileage on this machine already, just trying to get everything set up. So we're going to talk a little bit about the update. So what's really updated, as you can see, is that I got a lot done within these last few days. So um, we got finally a door hinge and door set up so i had to use wood because i was running out of excursions and i'm running out of cash and funds i'm not out i just i sp spent what i needed to for whatever and then you know this door thing was one of those things i wasn't too worried about because it is just a door and it's going to be covered up but i kind of like it i mean it already has it already has wood inside of here and on top of that we already have uh this this machine has like all the elements if you think about it we got water steel because this laser head is made out of steel now um then we have aluminum too so they'll be like metal we got wood we got uh gas we got a sticker vinyl uh plexiglass uh, aluminum uh, excursions rubber belts you know like there's so many different elements inside this machine compared to any other machine that I've ever worked on is usually I'm around like just aluminum and like a ball head screw will be steel and then we have some you know plastic like uh, 3d printed stuff but this has like everything I'm, I haven't put this much stuff in a machine before so I thought I was just it was just interesting that I had all this these parts inside of one machine now and I just wanted to mention it but anyway I'm sorry if I'm getting off topic so yeah, we got the door made, and it's really nice. Um, the hinges and everything are made for aluminum excursions. Um, so I bought that off of uh, Amazon for like 16, 17 bucks. Um, comes with two door uh, handles and four hinges with some nuts and bolts to you know mount it into excursions and everything. So I only needed two hinges, one and two over there. And then we got the door handle and I'll lift it up and it looks pretty nice um, it sits flush in this little groove here so literally when I close it you guys will be able to see it barely has any gap to move and the reason why I left this gap here is because I do have some gas struts and what that is is basically the stuff that like holds up car doors and bumper like uh, trunks and stuff like that um, you get these gas struts that hold up like your hood of the car underneath so that we don't put like a stick in there the gas strut holds it it's like a shock absorber but it pushes and keeps it up once you move it to a certain position so when I lift this up it's going to stay up right here and the ones I got is really good um, I got that from Amazon as well coming in probably if not tomorrow then by Thursday for sure and uh, what that, what that, what the weight of it is, is uh, 40. It can hold up to 45 pounds, which I know for sure this door is not anywhere near 45 pounds. Like I'm lifting it with one arm with uh, with ease. I would say maybe 10 to 15 pounds for this. I don't really know, but super light. Anyway, um, so yeah, the door closes and opens really nice. We got some black carbon fiber filament. Oh, not filament carbon fiber vinyl yeah you can see i 3d print a lot <laughs> so i got some black carbon fiber vinyl and then we got the red carbon fiber vinyl i'm doing the whole door i think in the black carbon because um it's going to have another strip here and then i think another one right here because since i have the black door handle it would look kind of nice and then all around the edges is going to be red carbon fiber and then uh so we got these two panels in the front already done got this one done I just need to cut out the holes and everything to mount all my controller stuff which reminds me um, I want you guys to give me your opinion on where I should mount my emergency stop and my start switch here so should I do it above the controller so like the controller will be sitting right here and then like you know emergency and a switch or whatever below the controller or over here in the front that can have like a front panel that has the switch and emergency stop there you know give me some ideas guys I'm, I'm all about hearing what you guys got to say and what you guys think I should do where I should mount the stuff at um, also 
I want to get over here on the other side really quick and show you guys that everything has been encased in the back. So we got all the plexiglass done with the vinyl on them. All of the bolts are in, so that's good. Everything is completely shut off. And then I even got some brass fittings and connectors for the water line. So literally I can just take this off, drain it or whatever, and move it. I don't have to go in here, unplug the CO2 hoses or anything like that. And um, the inlet goes in here, and I believe it goes all the way to the front of this part right here where I can see. I have it long because I'm going to have it mounted in here somewhere where I can see it, see through it. Um, so I got this piece that allows me to actually watch the water flow. It's a water flow sensor basically. And uh, so when the pump's on, this little thing spins. And um, so I had this kind of long so that way I can do that. And then, um, so literally it comes in from over here, the inlet, and then goes through to that flow sensor. It comes back this way into the first part of the CO2 all the way down to the end of the CO2. Then comes back this way to this outlet down into the bucket. And I do want to get some more brass fittings and drill some holes into the side of this. Then I don't have to worry about it kind of sticking up with the lid. I can lock the lid in place and not have to worry about it. So I'm probably going to wind up doing that within this week. Just buy some more fittings like this one right here. And uh, just have like a port holes coming out the side where I can just push them in. So I would just have hoses coming out going into this and then... Um, so basically this will be the inside that allows it to go down inside there as well. So there will be hoses that will be on the outside but also on the inside too so it can connect like how this is set up. And then um, also I got these two panels over here done today. So that's good. I'm going to probably have to um, cut out some of this information or paneling because what's going to happen is I have a blower fan motor or extractor but I'm not using this one this one came with the original K40 I have a new one coming in and it has a smaller vent attachment that I'm getting for it so I'm just going to be on here I'm going to have to cut out a hole and all that and then you know the mountain screws and all once that happens then I'll fin finally be able to really start cutting without having to worry about the fumes in the house and stuff. That's why I haven't cut another piece yet or anything like that. I haven't been cutting plexiglass. I've only been getting what I have and just mounting it and figuring out where I need to cut it at. That's why I started with this. Um, if you see over here, we got a piece of tape, masking tape, that goes underneath. It's, mar it's marking the edge of this aluminum so that way I can peel this, like take this off flip it upside down and just do a complete straight line cut with the machine so I can do like on the X all the way down this whole strip that'll make it nice and flush same thing with this piece over here I got an overhang so I need to put a piece of tape that mounts from here underneath all the way over there then I can take this piece off cut that straight down then I'll have another straight piece uh, ready for me to get mounted and then I'll have to have this overhang over here or anything like that and I will be adding some lights uh, I do have some LEDs coming in and they're really good ones too they have high CRI I'm really hell bent on making sure that my lighting is always good I'm into like for photography and videography and stuff obviously on YouTube and um, so I'm a really stickler for good lighting so high CRI is something really dear to me and um, so I have some high CRI LED lights to come in to help bring out real color representation of stuff here. And uh, if you're wondering, yes, I am covering all this in black carbon fiber, but I'm not going to cover everything. Once I'm done covering it, I'm going to take all these panels off, make sure they're all glued up together so that way they won't be doing anything like this. We can kind of like push down and go see through it. Um, and then I'm going to have the machine cut out a hole that allows the other plexiglass that's on the K40 machine to sit in because that one is actually rated and designed to block out any of the UV laser light basically. So literally the infrared laser light that you get is going to be blocked with that so I want to make sure that I keep that same um, plexiglass in 
So it's gonna have like an orange one, like dead center. So that way I can still watch my stuff being cut and um, all the rest of it is blocked. But I did read online that any kind of plexiglass that you get will diffuse the light. You don't have to have, ple um, you don't have to cover it in carbon fiber or anything like that. Um, they, uh, the forum that I was reading, they were saying that you, uh, all you need to do is just make sure it's covered. It doesn't have to be any type of special plexiglass either. So you don't have to have it like a fogged out one or paint it or anything like that. It can be this clear and still not, and still block the laser light information. But, you know, I'm really safe, so I'm going to block it all out with just the uh, vinyl. And I even got new safety glasses, and these are from Cloud Ray. Ray. So, literally, with Cloud Ray stuff, you know it's legit. So, um, anyway, I hope you guys are liking the video. Please like, share, subscribe. Let me know what you think. I'm not going to let this video drag out too long. Um, hopefully, you guys are liking these videos. I really do appreciate all the comments I get from you, all my subscribers and v viewers. And like I mentioned, if you guys have any suggestions or thoughts about where I should mount the end stop or the uh, emergency stop, I'm sorry, the emergency stop and the, the start switch or the uh, turn on key switch, uh, let me know. I definitely will take any um, thoughts in, into consideration, basically. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for watching. You guys have a great night.